There's me, there's us. There's them. We live in Dorset. So that's me, that's her, that's them. And together we are the Bear Fam. Good morning, Bear Fam. It is Sunday and it's the 12th of June what would have been my grandmother's birthday but she's passed so let's all wish Joyce Toy happy birthday Nan um yeah she my Nan she had four children uh one of which was obviously my mother she had another girl who was the youngest and nearest my age. It was a bit of a happy accident. <laughs> um, sadly, she's passed from cancer already and I miss her terribly. So hi, Tina. And then she had two boys, Keith and Chess, who I don't... The difficult years because of all the issues with mum, I kind of withdrew myself from the family because it was just an impossibility really I couldn't she wouldn't be anywhere I was so I couldn't go to family functions um, even when I went to see my grandparents and she was in the house I had to stay downstairs while she was upstairs with them in their granny annex um, in fact that's the one time she ever met Ellie I think Ellie was about four or five and my grandparents had said to me why are you stopping Ellie seeing no, why are you stopping your mum seeing Ellie? And I, I've i never stopped her. In fact, I wrote to her while I was pregnant and she wrote back saying it was a fate worse than death. So I've never stopped her. And they said, oh, well, and they sort of not challenged me, but like, well, she's here this week, she's around. So I said, well, that's fine. I'll bring Ellie to meet her. But um, she made conditions that I was not in sight or anywhere near her. <laughs> Um, so I sat downstairs like a Muppet for a couple of hours while my daughter was upstairs in the granny annex with my grandparents and my mum. And that was the one and only time that my mum ever met, made contact, had any interaction with Ellie whatsoever. And Ellie's, what, 17 in September? So it's been a long time since I saw or spoke to my mum. <laughs> Uh, and now my dad's sort of done the same thing really um, I was to blame I suppose in the first instance I was going through the first stages of leaving the police and on sick leave because of various health issues and I was very I think unstable is the most polite word but he came to visit and he started sort of having a little snipe at a few things I was doing this being one of them um, YouTubing and for the first time in my oh, I don't know how, I don't even know how old I was then but late 40s I bit back and I think he was a bit gobsmacked and then he sort of started saying I'll leave if you carry on like that I'll leave and it reminded me at the time there was a chicken advert on the television that um, the woman was having pork for dinner and the chicken was like having a go at her. It was a stupid advert. But the chicken kept saying, I'll leave, you know, I'll leave. <laughs> and that's in my head, that's all I could hear as he was saying it. And in the end, I said, oh, go on then, on your bike. <laughs> so he did. <sighs> and I have apologised, I've sent written, but shortly after he went, he sent me an invoice for all the money he'd ever lent me or given me. And he signed it DNA, which I found really hurtful. It really sort of stabbed me. And there have been various other instances that have really hurt, but I'd never really tackled him on. So I sent back a real snotty letter to be fair, and it was written in anger and it shouldn't have been sent probably, but I sent him this money. I sent him extra and told him to buy himself a personality while he was, while he was at it. And um, I said, I can't believe that I'm the spawn of the she-devil and the grim reaper. So, he hasn't spoken to me since either. <laughs> so I'm an orphan.
Hey bear fam, adopt me. I need adopting. <laughs> I am an orphan. Right, um, I'm on the hill. Uh, families, people, you can't choose them. And I'm sort of coming to terms with the fact that they weren't much cop when I, if you excuse the pun, they weren't much cop when they were around, really. Um, it was all about what they needed as opposed to what I needed. I think one of the final things my dad did that really hurt, amongst a whole raft of others, but I had a staffie who I loved to death called Penny. And Penny was really poorly just after Christmas. Um, and he was driving down. Um, he lives in Yorkshire and he was on his way down. And I remember speaking to him on the phone and I was in bits about the fact that I could tell that Penny was on the way out. And I'd made an appointment with the vet for the following day and I sort of knew that that was her final journey. And um, he said to me on the phone, don't worry, darling, I'll be there tomorrow. Um, I'll come with you, we'll do it together. Well, the following day, he was in a hotel like half a mile away and I contacted him and he said, oh, I'm Sarah, sorry darling, I'm really too busy. Um, I can't make it today. Um, he had his new wife with him. Um, we've got to shoot off to X, Y, Z and um, I hope it goes all right. And that cut to the quick. And the other one that I remember really clearly was when he was with wife number two. Wife number one was my mum. Wife number two died of cancer. Uh, and Ellie sort of thinks of as her granny. Wife number three is his ex-childhood sweetheart who he contacted shortly after wife two died because he didn't want to be on his own, I think, really. Um, but he, he didn't tell me. He told me he was grieving and couldn't see us and don't come near me, I'm grieving. But the reality of it was he was off courting wife three. Anyway, that wasn't what I was going to say. Wife two, Ellie and I were in Exeter down the road and I'd been there all week because I'd in the process of Marcus and I splitting. And I was needy. I was very emotionally whatever. Ellie was uh, two or three. Um, and he'd agreed, after all week of hassling him to come and see me, because I just wanted a shoulder to cry on. Too busy, too busy, too busy. He finally said, oh, we'll meet up on the Sunday. We'll have a lovely day together. We'll walk on the, because my the flat I'd rented was on the River X. We'll have a nice walk and we'll have some lunch and whatever. Anyway, so I got Ellie up early because, you know, kids of that age. Bathed us both, dressed us beautifully. And we're both giggling and happy and, I get a call. Sorry, love, too busy, can't make it. Well, we both burst into tears. It was a real blow at the time. Anyway, following day, he said, well, come round to the house. You come to us. Um, but make sure you bring yourself some lunch. Again. So I turn up, bring myself some lunch. And um, his wife's number two accidentally dropped into the conversation that they'd had a lovely time at the garden centre the previous day and look at all the lovely things we bought and you know what it felt like somebody had stabbed me it literally felt like I had been slapped really hard it's hard to explain and it it hurt it really really hurt anyway that's that's two of a Oh, when I was getting married to my husband, yes, it was a quick sort of... We've been together quite a while, but we sort of decided to get married. We both worked shifts. We wanted to get it done and dusted. Uh, and my dad lived about an hour down the road. Mum wasn't speaking to me at the time, at that time either. She hadn't spoken to me on and off most of my life, I think. And um, I rang him and said, can you come to the wedding? It's Pool Harbour, hour up the road. It's only going to be a quickie. No, I'm too busy, love. Can't make it. And yet when he married wife number three, he expected me to drive all the way to Yorkshire for it. Anyway, I'll stop griping. Yeah, you know this car that's up on the hill? Do you remember the car? Well, some Picasso has decided to um, decorate it, look. 
they've had a right old go with the old fluorescent paints. Um, actually, a part of me actually likes it. <laughs> part of me likes it. It's bright. Oh, <laughs> uh, there we go. Right, doggies are begging. Oh, it obviously had tinsel on it as well at some point, look. Uh, right, you want a biscuit? Let's see if there's anybody around. There we go. One for you. One for you. One for you. Right, does anybody want a drink? Chunky, you're covered in grass seeds. You're going to have to have a brush down. Anybody want a drink? No? No? Jack? No? Okay. <laughs> no drinks wanted. Oh, sorry for the wobbliness, people. Multitasking. No, Moo, one at a time is enough. One at a time is enough. I could put that bit of tinsel on your collar, look. I'm not going to. Come on, then. Moving on. So, do you know what? When I started this vlog, I wasn't intending on talking about family. But um, I felt the presence of my grandmother being her birthday. So, anyway, the point... <laughs> It's a very convoluted point, but because of the state of things with mum, I really sort of distanced myself from the rest of the family. Um, I'm back in contact, thankfully, with my mum's sister, who's the one that's died, daughter, who's an amazing young lady called Emma. She's got a family of her own now. Oh, God, I remember her toddling around. Do you know what? When Ellie was little, there was a group of kids that played at the front. Um, if I can find a picture, I'll show you. But there are a lot of kids, um, a lot of kids, and they're all like grown and gone now. And one of them's like due to give birth to her daughter. She's like 21. But it's just some of you that are old enough will understand this. But my in my head, they're all still little, and I, I there are times I look outside and expect to see them all playing like they used to. Um, there's a new generation of little ones out there playing now, but I still, I don't know. You know, obviously Ellie's big and I know they've all grown up. But as you get older, seeing people actually go from babies to adults is a really weird, for a good portion of your life, everybody's sort of your age or older, normally older, and then all of a sudden, you realise that you're the older generation. <laughs> it's quite a realisation. Oh, seriously. I've got itchy eyes and I stupidly put eyeliner on, so I've probably got black sludge dripping down my face, so I apologise for that. I've got to keep an eye on Jack. If he sees somebody else, he is an absolute kid. He just legs it. Terrible. The other two are absolutely fine. Loyal as they come. They may shout and pretend that they're angry from time to time. Especially Chunker. Chunker's very protective of Jack. Very protective of Jack. Which is ridiculous on the basis he's tiny. And Jack's built like a brick outhouse. Oh, Jack, is you tired, baby? Jack's always tired. Anyway, I've probably rambled on for a, long enough for a whole vlog by now. Uh, another tumultuous week in our household. Uh, but the exams, we've probably got another two weeks of exams. And then it's all done. Ah, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> um, Ellie had a really bad night one night. Up all night, stressing, crying, walking the streets. Police brought her back at one point woke me up, came in the house and woke me up, if you can believe that. Uh, <clears throat> and she didn't go to the history exam. One, hist one exam so far that she's missed. Um, but she went in the afternoon to the English exam. But um, she's been told that because there are three papers in history, if she does the other one, so she'll have done two out of three, they will mark the papers and she'll get an average mark 
and uh, she might still be able to pass. So, like I said to her, I think she was expecting the sky to fall in because she didn't go. And she was so stressed and so, it's difficult to see her like that. And I said, don't go. If it's that bad and it's making you feel that ill, don't go. I can't not go. Anyway, she didn't go. She didn't get any crap from anybody. What happened the previous night, day, she'd had, do you remember me telling her? It was the last time I vlogged. Um, she had a really bad experience in the exam the day before where she started ticking and they um, had to take her out and put her with a scribe. Um, and it was the day after the night, the day, you know, the, the, the evening and whatever after that. So the day I vlogged really. Uh, so. But that's where we're at people, two weeks to go. If I could only find a dog sitter, I would take her away at the end of the exams, as we could both do with a break. But I don't know whether it's COVID or what it is, but my old dog sitter moved to be nearer her family, which is fine. But all the ones I can find now are limited to two dogs. And that, well, that's the ones where they all babysit them, you know, take them to their house. Um, I can't find anybody that will come into my house, whether that's COVID related, I don't know. But at the moment, we're not going to get a summer on day. <laughs> oh, I mean, I've looked at her mates doing it, but seriously, I don't really think for one night I've used her mates. But for any more than that, I just don't think, A, their parents would be... Oh, sorry to move just drop the leads. Um, beyond that, I don't think their parents would be happy and I wouldn't be happy. It's, you know, I mean, 16, I know at 16 you can go and live on your own, but um, anyway, it's not appropriate is what I'm saying. So yeah, if anybody knows of somebody that wants to come and have, a, oh God, dog coming, alert, alert. Anybody wants to have a holiday in Weymouth <laughs> in a tiny little house. Oh looking after three annoying pups who have got issues. I mean, they're not straightforward dogs by any means. I mean, taking three dogs for a walk would be a nightmare. I appreciate that. I have got extending leads, two on one and one on the other, but it's, an, it's a practiced art form, walking three dogs on a lead. Just giving them all a drink. Chunk, you sure you don't want a drink, sweetheart? Yeah. Drink, drink. Chunk, chunk. Drink, drink. Oi, chunky, have a drink. Drink. Yeah. Have a drink. No? I don't understand them. At the beginning of the walk, they'll drink. And towards the end of the walk, they just drink less, which is weird, because they're hotter. Oh, somebody coming. It's a pain in the bottom. Oh, yes, we're going to move forwards, but we need to make sure we go around that person because I don't like being close to other people. Can you? Thank you, Jack. Right, well, what we'll have to do is just go up a tad further than normal and turn off then. Because she's going quite slowly. Right, I'll catch you towards the end or after we pass this woman. You know me and vlogging in front of people. Despite the fact I know I'm vlogging in front of people. I don't like vlogging in front of people. I'm sure that makes a lot of sense. Anyway, coming down the other side of the hill now. <laughs> right. Um, Weymouth Bay looking glorious in the sunshine. Nice breeze, actually. Very nice. Anyway, just wanted to tell you all where I was at. Catch up try and keep doing a few more vlogs because I've had some lovely comments from people saying that it makes a difference to their life and hey if we can all make a difference to one person's life that's got to be worth it hasn't it so I'm going to try harder um, so I hope you all have a beautiful Sunday from the pooches and I on our hill I kind of wish it was my hill, but then that would be greedy. Um, 
take care of yourselves and each other and I'll catch you soon. It won't be long, I promise. Um, don't know what else I can say, Bertha. But thank you, thank you for sticking with us all these years. Um, Ellie has said that once her exams are done and life moves on a bit, she'd like to come sort of back into the fold a bit. Um, uh, she won't get teased then. I mean, she, I was unaware that she used to get teased about the vlog. Um, and that's that was my fault. So, but now she's older. We even talked about going to the States or something and helping with all the cold cases that are over there. I've been watching, I don't know if I told you, I was watching Adventures with Purpose, a group of people that volunteer their time to go and sonar lakes and stuff to look for uh, missing people and their vehicles. You know, they've committed suicide or they've had an accident, gone into the water and people just have had them classed as missing for sometimes decades. And with the use of sonar in a little boat, they sort of find them, mark them with a magnet, and then they've, they're also qualified divers. And they dive down, and I think it's 23 cases they've solved so far. And uh, we thought we'd go and help. <laughs> yeah, don't. The pair of us just fancy a new adventure, so if you've got any suggestions what you think the pair of us could do with our lives, just comment down below. <laughs> anyway. Thanks for joining us, me, us, me and the boys. Hope you're well and I will catch up with you soon. Sending you love, Bear Fam. <laughs>